At the Modern Times Bookstore, a gay Marxist bookstore in San Francisco, on a not unusual night in 1981, Susie Bright read a poem about making love to her girlfriend. A few days later, Bright received a letter from a woman named Myrna Elana who had seen Bright's poetry reading and invited her to be a contributor for the first ever issue of On Our Backs, Entertainment for the Adventurous Lesbian. Through Elana, she met Debbie Sundahl and Nan Kinney, the power couple behind On Our Backs. Meanwhile, all the way across the country, in Boston, a similar idea was being hatched. Amy Hoffman and Cindy Patton met each other while working at Gay Community News, a gay and lesbian liberation weekly newspaper, and began dating in 1982. Debates about sex, sexuality, and pornography were raging through feminist communities, part of what has now come to be known as the feminist sex wars. Inspired by these national debates and conversations with other lesbian and bisexual women working at Gay Community News, Patton and Hoffman began to talk about creating an erotic to pornographic publication by lesbians and for lesbians. Hoffman recalled using the Heresies sex issue as a model. Heresies was a feminist collective in New York City that published an arts and politics magazine. Their twelfth issue, The Sex Issue, came out in 1981 and was one of the first feminist publications to explore some of the then less popular questions about female sexuality and pleasure. Pieces covered a range of topics from bisexuality, butch femme lesbian genders, feminism and sadomasochism, childhood sexuality, sexuality for women of color, fag hagging, celibacy, pornography, and sex work, among other issues. Conversations around these topics had become increasingly unfriendly and dogmatic in many feminist communities at the time. Pornography was one of the most divisive subjects in the sex wars. Anti-pornography feminists felt that there was a direct link between pornography and violence against women. Feminists like Andrea Dworkin and Catherine McKinnon drafted legislation to ban all pornography. These debates exploded at places like the 1982 Barnard Sex Conference, the Michigan Women's Festival, and other feminist spaces and communities. Out of these embittered conflicts and debates about sex and sexuality, On Our Backs and Bad Attitude emerged, the first ever feminist pornography. In June of 1984, Bad Attitude appeared nestled between the folds of fag rag and gay community news, signaling a critical solidarity with radical gay men's culture and gay male sexual attitudes. Bad Attitude was without a doubt a political project. In response to the debates in the feminist community over what was authentically feminist, Hoffman defended Bad Attitude in Sojourner in 1985 and asserted, We come out of a feminist tradition in that we are creating our own media to communicate with our sisters about issues we can talk about nowhere else. On Our Backs and Bad Attitude were created partially in reaction to the feminist lesbian sexual ideology that placed more importance on political identification with women than erotic attraction to women. By 1984, what began as a radical and liberating emphasis on overall bodily sensuality evolved to become, for some, an oppressive standard of political correctness and sexual behavior, a standard that On Our Backs and Bad Attitude were revolting against. In the first issue of On Our Backs, Susie Bright described a letter she received from a lesbian couple who wrote, We seem to be suffering from some hangover from our heterosexual past that makes us both want sensation in our vaginas apart from direct clitoral stimulation. Could you please send us some very discreet information about dildos? Bright wrote back passionately, Ladies, the discreet, complete, and definitive information on dildos is this. Penetration is as heterosexual as kissing. Bright, along with other self-proclaimed sex radicals in the 1980s, sought to change lesbian sexual assumptions and standards of sexuality. On Our Backs soon became the face of a growing public lesbian sexual culture. Toys for Us became a regular feature in the magazine. Susie Sexpert, Bright's pseudonym, painted a world of sex positivity with frank and funny sexuality information, accompanied by a picture of herself staring humorously at the camera with a finger between pursed lips. Her column extolled the virtues of vibrators and anal sex. She urged readers to follow their desires and push their boundaries. As time went on, more columns were added. Sex tracks, a collection of sex-related news items, fantasies in the field where readers could write their own fantasies. 
In the Pink, a sexual health column, and Sex Point for sex-related op-eds. By including these regular features, On Our Backs defined sexual health, sexual politics, fantasies, and reader participation within the purview of Sex for the Adventurous Lesbian. While part of the same burgeoning movement of sex positivity and the production of lesbian sexual media, Bad Attitude and On Our Backs were very different magazines. Bad Attitude used black and white home photos and homemade stories, mostly created by Patton, Hoffman, and their friends, and had a small distribution. On Our Backs was glossy and commercial, paid their models and contributors, and had a national distribution. In their introduction to the magazine, creators Myrna Alana and Debbie Sundahl announced that 1984 was the year of the lustful lesbian and ushered in a new era of sexual lesbian media. On Our Backs made visible a new form of lesbian capitalism based on the viability of lesbian erotic life as a source of profit. They centered the burgeoning new lesbian erotic entrepreneurial businesses like the first lesbian escort service, leather paraphernalia for women, sex toys, erotic photography, lesbian-made porn videos, lesbian-friendly hotels, and much more. More generally, both On Our Backs and Bad Attitude contributed to the production of lesbian style and aesthetics in the 1980s. What was represented in On Our Backs and Bad Attitude was declared to be beautiful, desirable, and erotic within the lesbian-defined space of each publication. Photographs like Morgan Gwenwald's Even Femmes Go Down pushed directly at assumptions for lesbian femme-identified women. In their five-year anniversary issue, Nan Kinney and Debbie Sundahl reflected, Women made erotic materials for themselves for the first time in the 1980s. We began to change sexual images controlled for decades by men. This act is nothing if not autonomous, radical, and feminist. The photographs allowed women to see themselves and their desires celebrated in lesbian media. Kinney and Sundahl optimistically hoped, As we enter the 1990s, lesbians will be setting the trends in sexual imagery and paraphernalia and influencing the sexual attitudes and behaviors of the mainstream. Framed by the feminist debates about pornography and sexuality, these two magazines were trailblazers, ushering in a new era of lesbian-made erotic media. As the first feminist lesbian pornography, On Our Backs and Bad Attitude paved the way for other feminist porn productions like Pink and White, Tristan Taramino, Courtney Trouble, and so many others that have contributed to the wealth of sex-positive pornography and sexuality education that is available today.